This is beautiful. Seriously, this time. It looks amazing. So does this, and this, and this. Ryan Lockett's art is distinctive, consistent, and deserves a closer look. Let's go way back before Ryan was designing and illustrating his own games. I first saw his art in Dominion. Not these cards. These are from Harald Liska and Matthias Katrain, who illustrated a good number of the cards in the base set. Their style informs what I largely think of when I think of Dominion's art, a straightforward, fairly realistic approach that grounds the game to its medieval setting. Julian Delval's art takes a bit of a darker turn in this set, a touch more sinister and gothic. Then there's Lockett's contribution. I can't say it's my favorite piece of his art, but it stands out among the cards in the set. It's a little more fantastical, a little more whimsical. Remember this card. The first time I was aware of Ryan Lockett was with Above and Below. I found this box cover striking. The architecture of that building foreign yet comfortable. The two blue skies signaled a game light and fantastical. The creatures underneath with their menacing red eyes warned of danger. That's exactly what I got. I love the little details Ryan sprinkles throughout, like the alien language on this barrel, or the non-human creatures that simply exist without direct explanation. You discover their names and natures through randomly selected story snippets as you play. Even though this is clearly a fantastical world, it's grounded and lived in. It reminds me a bit of Wes Anderson's films, with many images center-framed, matter-of-fact, and balanced. You see that continued with Near and Far. I adore how simple and handcrafted these items appear. Near and Far has a dustier palette, where Above and Below's visual style is defined by rich, saturated greens and blues, here they're muted, almost erased. The journey is similarly more perilous, the oddities more odd. You can get a pack kiwi. Look at how the town board subtly evokes something like a Japanese western. Empires of the Void 2 lets Lockett showcase a sort of greatest hits, working with multiple color schemes in one game, because, of course, there are so many different planets. What strikes me in this game is the organic quality to Lockett's art. Even this robot is full of curved lines. He makes each location distinct, calling back to sci-fi visual touchstones. It's homage, yes, but it still feels genuine. The best kind of fantasy story is the one you can imagine yourself in. The landscape and people may be straight from the author's imagination, but the emotional reality holds true. I remember Narnia as a kid feeling more real than my own backyard. Ryan Lockett's art pushes up against the saccharine line that someone like Thomas Kincaid leaps over without a second thought, but he stays grounded. His worlds have danger, conflict, and violence, even as they're optimistic. Nothing I've seen from Lockett demonstrates that better than the cover for Sleeping Gods. This time, the hills are steep, inhospitable, and the creature underneath certainly means harm. Back to Adventurer. It's clearly inspired by Friedrich's Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog. This has become the prototypical example of romanticism, an artistic movement of the 19th century focused on strong emotions, heroic figures, and a deep love of nature. It's a lie, but a necessary one, to fight against the opposing lie of nihilism, cynicism, and technological despair. Lockett's worlds, to paraphrase Chesterton, remind us that, though there are dragons, they can be defeated. I think Wanderer inspires Lockett. Why? Because he keeps drawing it.